Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have a really cool integral. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times 1 minus cosine x divided by x squared dx. And this looks like the perfect sort of integral to apply Feynman's trick of differentiating under the integral sign, so that's exactly the path we're going to take. We'll define the integral function i as a function of some parameter alpha, and we'll define it as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times 1 minus cosine alpha x divided by x squared dx. So we're introducing the alpha parameter as an argument of the cosine function. And you can get another solution development by introducing it as an argument in the exponential function. That would work perfectly well too. Anyway, this structure gives us some useful information about the integral function. First up, we know that the target integral i is the integral function evaluated at alpha equal to 1. We also know that if we plug in alpha equal to 0, we get the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times 1 minus cosine 0 divided by x squared dx. And cosine 0 is 1, so we have the entire thing collapsing to 0 for alpha equal to 0. Bear in mind that we're defining alpha here to be non-negative. I believe that would suffice. Yep, perfectly fine. Okay, cool. So now that we have a plan, we need to differentiate the integral function with respect to the parameter alpha. And now, the big question is whether or not we can switch up the order of the integration and differentiation operators. That depends on the convergence of the integral function. Notice that in the numerator, we have a bounded function of both x and alpha. And this bounded function is being multiplied by the function 1 by x squared, which is a decreasing function on the interval of integration. So that means the integral function does indeed converge. So we can, in fact, switch up the order of the operators and write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of now the partial derivative of e to the negative x times 1 minus cosine alpha x divided by x squared dx. And because we're differentiating partially with respect to alpha, this e to the negative x divided by x squared term is treated as a constant, and we need the partial derivative of 1 minus cosine alpha x. And this sorts out to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x divided by x squared times sine of alpha x times x because of the chain rule, and we have some nice cancellation taking place, meaning that we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times sine alpha x divided by x dx. Okay, this is pretty cool, but we still have a pesky x term in the denominator of the integrand, so we might as well perform the differentiation one more time with respect to alpha, giving us the second derivative of i with respect to alpha, being the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x divided by x times the cosine of alpha x times x. And again, we have some nice cancellation taking place. The x terms are gone now. And we have a very simple integral to evaluate. That's the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times cosine alpha x dx. And this can be solved quite nicely using complex numbers. The cosine of alpha x is the real part of e to the i alpha x. And because the cosine function is an even function, it's also the real part of e to the negative i alpha x. So we can write i double prime of alpha as the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times e to the negative i alpha x dx, which gives us the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times 1 plus i times alpha dx. And on integration, we have e to the negative x times 1 plus alpha x divided by negative 1 plus alpha x. So let me just write the negative sign out here, with the limits being 0 and infinity. Now for the limits, 
Let's expand the exponential term just a bit. We'll rewrite it as e to the negative x times e to the, wait, this was supposed to be i times alpha terribly. Sorry about that. e to the negative i alpha x divided by 1 plus i times alpha. Again, terribly sorry about that. Now, as x tends to infinity, e to the negative x tends to 0. So we get a big bad 0 over there. And as x tends to 0, we have 1 times 1 in the numerator. So we need the real part, where the negative signs have just canceled out, of 1 by 1 plus i times alpha. And we can get the real part by expanding using the conjugate. So we have 1 by 1 plus i times alpha multiplying by 1 minus i times alpha divided by 1 minus i times alpha. So that means we have real part 1 minus i times alpha divided by 1 plus alpha squared, which implies that the second derivative of i with respect to alpha equals 1 by 1 plus alpha squared. So we're currently at the second derivative and we have to work our way back to the integral function. So let's integrate with respect to the parameter alpha. And that means on the left hand side, we have the derivative, the first derivative that is with respect to alpha. And on the right hand side, we have the inverse tangent of alpha plus a constant of integration c. Now to determine the constant, I'm going to have to work my way back to what the first derivative looked like. So this is it. And taking a glance at it, if I plug in alpha equal to zero, I have sine of zero in the numerator, which means that i of zero equals zero. Okay, cool, that is quite convenient. So we know that i prime of zero equals zero. So this implies that zero equals inverse tangent zero is zero plus c. And this means that the constant of integration is quite conveniently equal to zero. So we have the derivative of i with respect to alpha equal to the inverse tangent of alpha. And once again, integrating with respect to the alpha parameter gives us on the left-hand side i of alpha. And on the right, we need integration by parts, giving us alpha times inverse tangent alpha minus integral of alpha divided by 1 plus alpha squared d alpha. Okay, cool. And this is a pretty simple integral to evaluate as well. So we have alpha times inverse tangent alpha plus one half of the logarithm of one plus alpha squared plus another constant of integration c. Now recall earlier in the video, we worked out that i of zero is zero as well. So this implies that we have zero equal to zero times zero is zero, and we have one half of log one, which is zero. And again, the constant of integration is conveniently equal to zero. So we have finally i of alpha equal to alpha times inverse tangent of alpha plus one half of the logarithm of one plus alpha squared. And the target integral was the case for alpha being equal to one. So that means i equals inverse tangent 1 plus 1 half times the logarithm of 2. Okay, cool. So that means we have pi by 4 plus log root 2 or 1 half of log 2. Write it any way you please. That is a pretty nice result. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and support the channel if you want on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.